I think if I hear you call me Becky one more time, six pack, I'm gonna pop your tops. All six of them. Who are you? a match once again this is a paypal request from john mckinney thank you so much for that i really appreciate that if anyone wants to request any type of reviews for movies or something else re-reviews topics reactions lists pretty much any type of videos you can request it send it directly to my paypal or join my patreon i will try to get to it as soon as i can but this is a review of The Corpse Bride, which is in the style of stop motion similar to A Nightmare Before Christmas. And it's directed by Johnson, who actually worked on that film, and Tim Burton. Now it stars the voice talents of people like Johnny Depp, Helena Bonham Carter, Christopher Lee. And I'm like, well, I'm not surprised if Tim Burton's involved, those three, yeah, it makes sense why they're in it. Uh, Michael Golf. The person who played Alfred and Batman, Batman Returns, you know, even Batman Forever, Batman Robin. He has a voice in this. The movie, I thought, was pretty decent at the end of the day. It was pretty decent. Why? Because it was fairly short, fast-paced. Uh, the voice acting, the design. I'm a sucker for stop-motion. I love the art style of stop-motion animation. It's something you don't really see nowadays, especially in theatrical films. I can't remember what the last theatrical film... That's why I bounced the fucking thing. I can't remember what was the last theatrical film that really utilized that. At least to an extent of this. I'm sure some of people will mention in the comments. Feel free. But... It does have that dark look. Almost... As if they wanted it in black and white. Like it's this close to being a black and white movie. I wonder if this is one of those things where they wanted it black and white. But they were told not to. So they had some color. I, I don't know. But it definitely has a nice design to it. Especially when. The story of the film is Johnny Depp's character. Has an arranged marriage with this lady. I forget the actress's name. Who voiced the, the bride to be. And is it Emily Watson? I know it's Emily. I forget. I forget her last name. I apologize. But it's a arranged wedding. They're going through rehearsal. He's so nervous. He's screwing up. So I, you know what? You learn your vows. Christopher Lee plays the guy who's supposed to marry them. The reason it's an arranged marriage: one wants to get social status. The other. Family wants to give money. So in exchange, you did social status. We did, we did social status. You did money. So when Johnny Depp is discombobulated, goes into the woods, he's practicing and he puts a ring on a branch. Unbeknownst to him, this branch is a hand and resurrects the corpse bride, voiced by Helena Bonham Carter. I will say with the voice acting, it's fairly good. Like Johnny Depp... He's not really doing any accents. 
He's just playing a guy who's very unsure of himself and nervous and shy and uh, you know, not the typical Johnny Depp that I see him or I guess hear him, and which was nice. It was a nice change of pace. And Helena Bottom Carter seemed very sweet, but also a tragic character. Uh, you learn her backstory because she's like, oh, you're my husband now, and takes him to the land of the dead. And the skeletons sing her backstory about how she was going to be married, left, heartbroken, was murdered, and thus here and now. And that's some really nice design work when it goes to the underworld. It reminded me a little bit of Beetlejuice in the fact of the creativity involved with the different designs and like what we're going to see next. Meaning like in the underworld you have this little person like a pirate that has a sword in him. Someone takes a sword out and when the guy was drinking it poured into a glass and the other guy took it and drank it. Um, the coarse bride her eyeball keeps popping up and there's a worm that wants to talk like he's oh what's his name oh my god Peter Laurie well, hello there how you I can't even do Peter Laurie if you look up Peter Laurie you'll know what I mean by the voice so you again you have this character that lives and one of our main characters behind her eyeball Again, the look of the skeletons. This is the part where Johnny Depp picks up the person and goes, I got a dwarf. I'm not afraid to use him. Even when he's running out and he's scared, there's one person whose head falls off and he's sweeping. So he's like shrugs and sweeps up his own head. Uh, one guy says, oh, excuse me. So he splits in half in order to walk by him. This is the end. The uh, not only the stop motion animation is very well done, but the it, it's nice to see movies that showcase that kind of creativity. And not all is horrible. I mean, he gets to meet his old dog Straps, who's a pile of bones, and he's tr giant does trying to figure out what to do next trying to trick her into going back to the real world but then realizing oh maybe she, she's getting married so one more on do maybe I will marry you it all comes out in the end it all is able to get uh, settled at the end is it Richard Grant I believe is our one of our villains I'm not sure if I got the name right but he's a guy who is the villain in Hudson Hawk I always remember him from that. He's been a lot of other stuff too. And, you know, he has the right voice for Richard E. Grant. He has the right voice for this type of villain. And the ending is sweet with what happens and, you know, the freedom of the soul. The Johnny Depp's character, the fact that he plays a guy that's easy to, to feel sorry for because of how scared and meek but uh, not to the point of being a fucking pussy but more like oh yeah I feel sorry for him hopefully he'll make it out okay and I said the movie does really overstay its welcome it's a fairly short film the songs are catchy I will say I would put a number on uh, I almost said a number on Elm Street well I guess I would put a number on Elm Street above this but I meant to say A Nightmare Before Christmas I hope I said that at the beginning other people are like what the fuck do you mean Nightmare on Elm Street if I fucked at the beginning I meant to say Nightmare Before Christmas is what uh, Mike Johnson worked on I would say I, I, I put that above this because the Jess Yellington character was very unique look and style of the character and I don't mind the songs in this the songs of that were a little bit more uh, catchy for me. What's this? What's this? There's something in the air. What's this? What's this? 
So I, I got a bit more, and the whole Halloween versus Christmas motif was fairly interesting to me. So, but this was not a bad film either. And to be honest, I don't really have a lot of issues with the film. There's not really a lot of stuff I would quote, I would be like critical about. Uh, I'm trying to think now. Like I'm watching. I'm like, okay, I'm not minding it. No, not really. I mean, sometimes you know, with me with movies. Even if I don't love the film, it doesn't mean it's because I think it has a shitload of flaws. Sometimes it's just one of those movies, you get movies like, yeah, I don't mind it. And that's as far as it goes. And But you don't really have any particular reasons to why that's the case. It's just, it's just something you feel that it's hard to express. I mean, there were moments that I got a Beetlejuice vibe out of this, and that was, that's a good thing. Like, when they, I didn't like the different elements of the underworld. Hmm. I'm trying to think. No, I mean, I guess there, maybe because I didn't really feel a lot of drama, and the, the drama it does have, I'm like, uh. But on the flip side, I'm surprised that the course, spoiler alert, spoilers, I'm surprised the course by them put up more of a fight to keep. Johnny Depp's character to herself. I thought it was going to be one of those things where, you know, the the girl that he was going to marry is able to have to talk sense to her, into her. But the more I think about it, I actually admire that it went a different route because it made you, even though throughout a lot of the film, the course bride's like, no, you're mine, you're mine. This show, this gave her a bit more of a likable heart to it the fact that she has all the ability to go on Johnny Depp's terror doesn't know it and the course bride herself she sees the the other bride and goes you know what I was a bride my dream I was a bride to be my dreams were taken from me now I'm taking someone else's and I'm not going to do that so I'll take back what I said. That at least gives it a bit, makes the course bride a bit likable, more likable, a bit more heartfelt, a bit more of, okay, this person was not an evil person in the slightest. They they were able to do that good deed on their own volition. Um, I guess one of those things where. Johnny Depp's character doesn't really do. I was going to say he doesn't do a whole lot in the third act. Because it's mainly. Uh, Course Bride decides for him, no, we shouldn't get married. There she is. Richard e. Grant comes in. Maybe him and Johnny Depp have a little thing, but not really much. It's more like, oh, that's who you are. Because there's a moment where he takes the, 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 the other bride, has a sorter, and there's like a little bit of a scuffle. There's a little scuffle, but it didn't really because really Richard E. Grant poisons himself like an idiot. Oh, maybe I, I, just something about was missing. I can't put my finger on it. I guess that's why I'm lolly dadding around. Should have done that before I started filming. But yeah, The Course Bride, if you like A Nightmare Before Christmas, I don't see why you would not like the, this film. It has that same feel, the same look, the, the stop motion animation, the, the gothic, old school style. 
And again, some of the songs are catchy. Even the beginning of the film where the parents are talking about how their son going to be married or how for one it's a happy day their son going to be married for the other it's a horrible day their daughter going to be married not a bad film at all not a bad film at all so I know that's not much of a review but it, it is a film that kind of speaks for itself and kind of a Tim Burton film no one really brings up and I'll put this over I was in Wonderland or fucking Dark Shadows or his Planet of the Apes or whatever the fuck else he's been doing lately. I definitely put this above that. I appreciate that it did not overstay his welcome. Didn't try to build itself to be this fucking two hour extravaganza like some movies do. So there you go. So with that said, thanks for watching. Take care and we will see you guys later. Bye bye.